you've watched Birdman three times. Uh, three times. I watched it th 33 times. Why, in this case, did you watch the film? Because it's really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> At this level, with you people, I mean, this is absurd. I think we all feel the same. I I'm not that I... it's absurd that you're here, but that <laughs> sure. she was like, no, you should go and watch playback. And I was like, really? Thank God, because I was doing all this gigantic, I was like playing to the back of the store. Yeah. You've heard me talk, I can't do 140 characters. <laughs> you know, I, uh, it'd be criminal. We're back and we're tight on me. Everybody shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm Robert Downey Jr. and I support Robert Duvall in The Judge. I need my walk. Leaving the scene, blood evidence, motive. Biggest mistake of your career and you just happen to run him over? I could convict you over coffee. Hi, I'm Steve Carell and I am in the movie Foxcatcher. Mark, you have been living in your brother's shadow your entire life. It's time. It's your time. Hi, I'm Benedict Cumberbatch and I'm in The Imitation Game. You will never understand the importance of what I am creating here. Our patience has expired. No! Hey there, I'm Eddie Redmayne, and I'm in the theory of everything. Prove it. Prove with a single equation that time had a beginning. I'm Michael Keaton, and I'm in the movie Birdman. You work with Rick and Thompson's like Waffle the Monkey? Huh? I might have said that. Yeah, but... you must. Come on, let's go. Come on. Robert, this film, The Judge, is the first production from your own company, Team Downey. Yeah. And what has it meant to you to sort of make that step into being a producer and to having a little more control over the film? Uh, you just want to look at the back nine, um, you know, when you're not a kid anymore and everything's got a half-life and, you know, when I'm not viable as, as a, a certain kind of role, I, wanna, I still want to be sticking around and, and I just love movies, you know? That's why I do this. I just, I'm crazy about movies. And I also just think about creating opportunities and creating environments. My missus is a, is a fantastic creative producer and people always say that they really felt looked after and they really had the experience they wanted and I've kind of been under her wing for a while. And so, you know, that, that's more than likely what I'll wind up doing. And do you see yourself transitioning away from acting or do you have some idea when that will occur? I love contemplating my image so much <laughs> that uh, you'll, you'll have to drag me away. But I think I also want to direct and just do other stuff, you know? Michael, you had directed one film. Mm -hmm. Is that something you are still interested in, or do you feel like you kind of got it out of your system? No, I've always wanted, it's kind of what I always wanted to do ultimately, not going to direct. I just like telling stories. And like Robert, I really love movies. I love, I love the art of it, and I love how, I just like, I just think the filmmaking is, just a great medium, medium, and so, yes, I, I want I, I want to do a few more. May reach a point where I go, oh boy, I don't, I'm not very as good at this as I thought I was, or I don't like it as much. But yeah, certainly something. Actors make great directors, I think. Generally yeah. speaking, actors do tend to make good directors, I think. Hmm. I don't know why that is, actually. I'll ask you about that because I'm. I don't know why that is. Sorry. That's okay. Last question for Mr. Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> you had said uh, in an interview that your director of Birdman, Alejandro Inarritu, that he was your kind of crazy. Uh -huh. And I'm curious what you meant by that. Um, I was probably just talking about how much I love this guy. I love his, loved and s loved slash love his, his work, what he does. And, uh, you know, and I, I also added that he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's tremendously talented, and and when I and I say he's crazy, but he's my kind of crazy. I mean, he's just it's just so great to be ar around uh, people like that. Um, it's just n not only contagious. It it ma you know what it does? It makes you realize, oh yeah, I'm not crazy because this is the kind of thing I like. You know, this is I'm I feel at home here. And with Alejandro, there's no such thing. There's no such. Everything is, you know, everything is uh, about something, and and um, his passion is extraordinary, and and it's really exciting to be around. Too long, too long of an answer. No, no, no. no, no. no. I have a question. Like How many times did he call you cabron? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> he does now. He texts me cabron, uh, <laughs> and he does all the time. That's his. That's his thing.
Steve, your director in Foxcatcher said, uh, Bennett Miller said that he liked that you weren't an obvious choice for this dramatic role. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about taking such a, a, a different role for, for yourself? I thought if he, if he had confidence that I could do it, then I figured that was enough. Because it wasn't, it, it wasn't anything I was lobbying for. I, I didn't see a breakdown of the character and say, oh, that's, that is me written all over it. <laughs> I've got to get in on that. Um, it just sort of happened. And uh, so, yeah, he expressed an interest, and I thought, well, he probably knows better than I do. So I just trusted that, trusted him. But were you spooked by it at all? Was there anything about the role that put you off? <clears throat> no, I wasn't spooked by it. I, it was challenging. It wasn't anything that I had necessarily done before. But, uh, I, you know, I looked at the guy as just essentially a really lonely person, and that's where I started. He was he was a tragic figure from the get go. So that's that's sort of how I approached it. I, I wasn't spooked by it, but I was really I I, I was sad about this life, mm. um, and it was you know sort of a, a horrible predicament for somebody. I don't know if that answers any part of your question. Of course, but, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, but there there's just a lot a lot to dig into with this guy. Do you have any idea why I asked you to come here today? No. No. Well, Mark, do you, do you have any idea who I am? No. no. Some rich guy calls you on the phone. I want Mark Schultz to come visit me. Well, I'm a, I'm a wrestling coach, and I have a deep love the sport of wrestling. And now, Eddie, you've, you've said that with taking on the role of Stephen Hawking, that, it, that at first you were actually sort of intimidated by the role. You didn't know if you could do it. And I'm curious, what, what was it that sort of turned you around? What made you think that you could take it on? I, I was to I totally spooked by it. But, but, but what happened was it was one of those things where you, you chase the job. Um, you know, I read this script, and it was so unexpected that, that actually I thought it was going to be a biopic of Stephen's life, and it was actually a kind of this kind of complicated love story. And so I did that thing of chasing down a job. And then you, you do that thing of having the job interview and sounding really confident and telling people the right things on the phone. And, and you b begin to persuade yourself that you think you can do it. And then you actually get the job. And you have that phone call of, and then a sucker punch of fear, basically, <laughs> uh, which was, and, and really, it's really interesting, actually, because the, the, the being, the, the fear side of it, and knowing that Stephen would see um, the film, and Ben's played Stephen as well, so mm -hmm. also, I, I, and we've never spoken about it, but mm -hmm. what that felt like, the idea, knowing that he will actually see the film is, a, is what galvanizes you, because mm -hmm. you feel a great responsibility to him and to his family, and, um, and I'm, I've, I'm, I always find fear helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel like it at the time. Bravo, Stephen. An extraordinary theory. Thank you. So what next? Prove it. To prove with a single equation that time had a beginning. Wouldn't that be nice, Professor? The one simple, elegant equation explain everything. Yes, it would. It would indeed. Thank you. Have you seen each other's Stephen Hawking's? Uh, I, I haven't seen his yet, no. I can't wait, I can't wait. I mean, I've been, you know, Eddie and I are friends of old, and I've been a fan of his ever since I first saw him on the London stage in Edward Abbey's um, The Goat, which he was just sublime in, um, as he is in every piece of his work. But I, I, had, I had exactly the same reaction when I got the job. I was, I, I thought it had gone away, actually. I thought it had gone to another actor. And uh, I'd forgotten about it. I think it was the day after my birthday or before it. And I was abroad and I got this crackly call going, you, you're, they, they would like you to play Stephen Hawking. And uh, just a, a nanosecond of elation before mm. going, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> it's, it's an amazing thing to know that that person's going to be sitting there. And um, 
Yeah, judging. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the difficulty is, you know, like, like I've I heard Eddie say, he, he couldn't, you know, you, even though he's there, you, sorry. <laughs> when, I, when I'm when i offered, I'm sure I'm going to have the same <laughs> reaction <laughs> when I place when him. When you get your hawking yeah. biopic? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you were sort of yeah. nodding knowingly when Eddie was talking about faking the confidence to get the job. Is that something you've ever done? Uh, yeah, all the, all the important ones, you kind of have a sense mm. that this is a milestone, you know? This window's opening, and, and, and maybe another 7, 10, 15 years later, you might have that same feeling again. So you can tell when you're at a turning point for sure, you know? And now you've become so obviously attached to the role of Iron Man and Tony Stark in taking on a... That's presumption. <laughs> <laughs> Many people yeah. around the world would know you as Tony Stark and your role in Iron Man. Yeah. In, in your role in Judge, I mean, are you concerned now when you take on other parts or moving into a sort of a serious drama that you're bringing something from, well, t part of some of Tony Stark with you? Uh, no, no more than I am about any other role, honestly, you know. I mean, it, it became kind of this, you know, phenomenal thing. I know the missus doesn't like it when I'm playing Tony Stark, but then I'm kind of a prick when I'm playing Sherlock. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Does it? Why doesn't she like it when you're playing Tony Stark? <laughs> I, because oh, I just right. assume that anything I ask for should just materialize. <laughs> 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 but I think that's also, that's just, I think that's just the life of someone who, the first thing I learned, like from Mr. Jellison at Theater Arts and, you know, at Santa Monica High School is to have an aesthetic distance. So I've maintained one. For, for some time, then the rest of it is just, you know, what generation are you born into, what is, what's culturally significant, and then, but then there's always just, you know, there's the work of the job that's in, in front of you, and you're always reaching, and, you know, you just, you shake it off. What do you mean by aesthetic distance? Um, that, uh, well, it's kind of that, that fourth wall thing, and that you don't take the job home. Right, you know? oh, I see. So that doesn't bleed into your... Yeah. Like. yeah, you're not supposed to, mm. you know. I suppose, or you are, you know. For some, it depends. I don't have a problem when I hear I hear those people talk about mockingly sometimes about uh, someone who is so method. You know, I, I figure whatever people need to do, they do. You know, mm. I actually get get that. Uh, it's uh, I always there's a I'm sure everybody here thinks the same. I would assume they do. It's a part of your brain that never. Uh, you know, for however months, however many months you're on the job, doesn't doesn't really leave. You know, it's uh, at least for me. I'm always afraid I got to tuck something something away back here because if I, I'm fearful that if I just drop it all together and just show up and go, what are we doing again? That uh, I'll just won't be there. Won't be will be locked in, you know, oh, so you I always try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ride. Oh, you might have a ball. <laughs> Do you find it difficult, though, when people ask you about what happened when you were doing it? I, you know, what were you thinking during a scene? You know, what is your character's motivation? I find it really difficult to talk about stuff like that. And, and not, not to be coy, yeah. but part of it's You mean that, you just don't want to give it up? Part of it's that. Yeah. Part of it that is that I just don't want to sound like a pretentious jerk. Mm -hmm. You know, this was my, mm -hmm. my, my process. Mm -hmm. But, but I think part of it too is that I would rather leave that for them to yeah. determine and yeah. not have what I'm saying filter the movie in any way. Also, it's for you, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's your it's your thing. You know, you don't need to give it to the world. I, I don't know. Maybe later in a situation like this, or people, there's a couple, there's some in Batman, I don't know, or in Birdman that I don't think I'm gonna ever tell anyone. I may tell my kid, or I, I, I kind of told Alejandro. But down the road, you know, I'm, I'm not a big uh, blabber anyway. But but I always feel like I gotta hang on to whatever I I've got and I've got, and then later in a situation like, in a situation like this or sharing with somebody, I'm okay with it for the most part. Now, you yourself just accidentally said Batman when you met yeah. Birdman. And how aware were you or how conscious were you going into the part in Birdman that people were going to bring all this Batman stuff to it? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. um, very, you know, I assumed that would happen. I mean, you know, you went, oh, okay, well, just keep reading. You go, well, there'll, there'll be that. But the script was really good. And 
uh, I'm, I'm talking about when I sat down with Alejandro or, or read the script after he gave it to me. And, and you know, obviously it was going to come up in discussion, and I'm totally okay with it. I mean, I mean, because once you see it, there's so much more to discuss, <laughs> like a lot more to discuss. Yeah. Yes. This is an interview. Your father was a drunk like Carver. Is that true, Mac? I'm is that true? My, no, no. Because my what? father was. My father was a mean fucking drunk. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He beat the shit out of us. That was okay, though, you know, because at least he was beating us. He wasn't thinking about taking it. He was out to his tool shed. He goes, oh, I got the tool shed. That son of a bitch would smile. I could say, you want to get down on your knees and unbuckle my belt? Oh. Or do you want me to take it off and use it on you? And now, Benedict, for you, with playing Alan Turing, I mean, he's a man about which there was a lot that is known, and there's also a lot that's not known about him. And so, kind of, how does your process begin? What sort of research are you doing to create that character? I met a couple of people uh, who'd, uh, well, a couple of relatives, a couple of his nieces, and a couple of people who'd worked with him in Manchester. But it was it was hard. There was no footage. There's no uh, audio recording of him. He, you know, he had a very particular stammer, a uh, very particular way of moving, and a lot of that is talked of anecdotally. So I, I sort of drew on that and worked with a dialect coach and tried to build this character with her. And one of the one of the real joys about this being made into a film is that his story will get to a broad audience because it's shocking the kind of comparative obscurity in, in, in line with his achievements. A man who was, is the father of mod the modern computing age, a war hero who broke a Nazi German code to basically bring the war to a two year early conclusion, thereby saving out the estimate 14 million lives. A gay icon, a man who didn't deny his sexuality in the time of um, abhorrent um, non-permissiveness. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm very proud of the mission of the film and part of this is to be able to talk about him and it in order to promote him and, and get him to a broad audience because he is an extraordinary man. He should be on the front cover of history books and science books as well, but also banknotes. He's up there with Darwin and Newton. Mm. He's an extraordinary, um, extraordinary scientist mm. and human being. Of course, that's what you're working on. But you also haven't got anywhere with it. If you had, you wouldn't be hiring cryptographers out of university. You need me a lot more than I need you. I, I like solving problems, Commander. And Enigma is the most difficult problem in the world. No, Enigma isn't difficult. It's impossible. The Americans, the Russians, the French, the Germans, everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. Good. Let me try, and we'll know for sure, won't we? When you're playing someone who's a genius, and Eddie, I'm curious about your opinion on this as well, how much of his work do you have to actually understand? All of it. <laughs> we both are, he's a wonderful physicist. I'm a, I'm a math, pure math PhD. Yeah. Now. No, yeah. I, mean, you know, I, I personally, you have to encapsulate enough of it to be able to play that moment with some tenacity, with some grasp of, 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 of the inner workings of at least the process of what they're understanding. Mm -hmm. But there's an awful lot of poetry in it, you know, if, 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 if they actually live the detail, the hard-won detail um, in prose, you know, we as actors get to play with it as poetry. Mm -hmm. Eddie, did you find that to be well, the case? I, Yeah, no, I, I did this sort of due diligence of feeling like my eyes had to, my retinas had to have scanned across <laughs> most, most of the words that Stephen had written, um, but the comprehension was a whole different matter. I, I did, I sort of spoke to one of his old students who was talking about or teaching me about the intricacies of space-time. Um, and I was like, no, 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 let's go back. Imagine I'm seven. Let's go back to literally to the word, uh, the word go. But, and one of the interesting things about Stephen is when his facilities went, when he was unable to use his hands and write anymore, he created this way of thinking, which he described as visualizing. And, um, and it was a way of, when you can't use your hands anymore, of, of using your mind and images in your mind to, to do research. I think that's one of the great things about being an actor. You, ha you have to not have a pulse in, to not learn something. You, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you, every, every job, you, and it, it can seem like the you silliest don't have to be job. Playing a genius. It's, no, it's you always walk human, away human knowing conditions. something that you never knew before. And I, and I mean every job. Literally. And you feel like you hold on to it, or do you kind of forget it after a little while? I'm, I'm kind of obnoxious, well, maybe not obnoxiously, but uh, sickeningly curious. No, I drive people kind of crazy because uh, I'm just. I'm just a curious person, so I suppose I hang on to some, but then I, I want to know about something else, and I want to know about something. And I'm not talking about what I do for a living. I'm talking about in life. But but it is true. You know, it's the that's one of the big perks I think of getting to do what I do or we all do is uh, 
you, you kind of have to learn something, you know. It's, it's kind of great. What do you think you're going to hang on to from Birdman? Well, the great thing about that is, wow, in this case, kind of everything, frankly. Because I look at this movie as a, uh, as a, uh, an audience member, uh, more so than any other film I've ever done. Do you really think you'll be ready for opening tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, previews are pretty much a train wreck. We can't seem to get through a performance without a raging fire or a raging heart on. I'm broke. I'm not sleeping, like, you know, at all. And uh, this play kind of starting to feel like a miniature deformed version of myself that just keeps following me around and, like, hitting me in the balls with a, like, a tiny little hammer. I'm sorry, what was the question? Never mind. You can't see this film. You can hate this movie. And you kind of have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you just, just kind of impossible not to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess I come. Away, I'm, it's more of a. I'm, it affirms kind of what I thought. I might someday have a chance to do, and I got a chance to do something like this. You know, so I'm a, I'm a fortunate dude. <laughs> Robert, you worked with Robert Duvall and The Judge, and I wonder, you were sort of nodding as Michael was talking. Did you have any moments working with him that affirmed what you were interested in as an actor? Sure. I mean, I mean, after a while, we're all, we're all just kind of sitting around, just people you're sitting around with for a long time, and then you, you know, the respite is you kind of go and do the scenes. Mm -hmm. So you don't fall behind. We had a really different process than what I'm... I'm hearing about from some of you guys, and it was kind of just a more straightforward kind of drama with a lot of wit in it. But I would find myself, like, I, I go and watch the monitor, mm -hmm. you know? I'll, like, do a take, and they'll be like, you want to do another? And I was like, well, let me see. I think the second one was good, or, or mm -hmm. whatever. And, and to me, the, you know, the biggest thing about The Judge is, is I, gave a, I gave a Greyhound a, a big enough track for him to run laps on and make good time. <laughs> Me at a Boy Scouts. As punishment for blowing up the Macross mailbox with M80s. I was 13. That you remember. Oh. That. Old enough to know better. You didn't come to my high school graduation or college. Why? Jail time. Truancy. I was going to reward anything. I graduated from law school, for Christ's sake. As opposed to what? Dropping out? Let me tell you something, okay? Here. I put a roof over your head, money in your pocket, clothes on your back, food in your mouth. Who paid for that college education? Your mother? I'm in every scene with him, but it, it was probably the first time in a decade that I wasn't really thinking about myself, mm -hmm. which reminded me that for the decade before that, I primarily was thinking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> and usually if someone asked me, Robert, what are you doing? I go, oh, just sitting here thinking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, can I ask you a question about, the, about watching playback and whether was that something that, because I've always had such an interesting sort of debate about that and yeah. uh, some directors won't let you anywhere near it and I remember the first film I ever did I'd only done theatre I was doing a scene with Tony Collette and after about an hour of being there she was like Ed should we go and watch playback and I was like no the director said I, I couldn't and she was like no you should go and watch playback and I was like really <laughs> thank god because I was doing all this gigantic I was like playing to the back of the stool <laughs> you know, so is that how she said it to you yeah she, she, really she, 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 she was very generous you know she, she was very lovely you know what that would be good <laughs> But, I, but since then, like, and so on this film, James Marsh allowed me every daily of the film because to, in order to... And I, I found it incredibly useful, and I understand directors' fear of actors' vanities and you sort of... Them, but was that something you've always done, or was it just because you were producing that you... Uh, well, you know, director runs the show, and if they say no, you just cop a resentment. And, and <laughs> do it. But I, I think when they do, let them in, particularly if you're doing something as specific as, as you know, Foxcatcher, where this is a, a big departure in your look, and you want to make sure, you know, I mean, it's... It makes there's, sense, there's, it? there's technical reasons, and then yeah. to me, I just tend... I won't make the same mistake more than twice right. if yeah. I can see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Steve, can you talk a little bit about working with Vanessa Redgrave? What was that like for you? It's incredibly scary. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett, before 
before she arrived, he took me aside and said, just so you know, she will eat you alive. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and that person, so that's, but it was all, I mean, that was part of his plan, too, because yeah, I really went back on my heels uh, about having her there. And she could not have been nicer and uh, more available. And she, she was so exciting to do a scene with because, I mean, obviously, she's a great actor. But when, when I was doing, it, we really only had one specific scene where we were interacting with one another. And she would change just incrementally every take. It would, she'd add something. She would improvise something. She, would, she was always shifting and always looking for a different avenue to go down. And, and it was exciting to be with that because it always made me adjust what I was doing in relationship to her. So um, she turned out to be exactly the opposite of that person who would eat you alive. She was incredibly uh, gracious and kind and generous. And uh, I love her. I just think she's, well, I, she's an icon, obviously. I am giving them a dream. And I am giving America hope. Hope. It doesn't matter. I'm glad you have your trophy. It can go in the trophy room, not in the Rosemont case. I don't like the sport of wrestling, as you know. It's a low sport. And I don't like to see you being low. Michael, I'd heard you didn't often even watch the finished films, but you've watched Birdman. Three times. Uh, three times. I'll watch it th 33 times. <laughs> why, why, in this case, did you watch the film? Because it's really fucking good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's so good, and I, don't, I never back off this. I'll say it forever, and you, yeah, it'll be okay with the day, I'm sure, it will happen when somebody comes up to me and says, you know, I saw the movie. It's actually not good. It's totally okay with me. Because to me, it's just, I, and I'm not, I'm honestly not talking, you know, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with what I did, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it. No, you're not. It's a great film, and it's so detailed. It's so detailed. It, re yeah. it rewards repeat viewing. If, if only for the, in the, uh, because it's, I've never seen anything made like this, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure anyone will ever make a film the way this was made and what are all the all encompassing just not just how it was made but I, you know i mean I could, I could go on and on and on but i can i, can I ask something because how long were the longest were the longest takes i can't remember how many minutes but uh i can only remember one and there were probably others that we had to cut back I don't know, there are 10, 11, 12 minutes or something, but there was one that was, I don't know how many pages it was. It was just page after page after page after page yeah. after page. You when it was that technical, though, was there a sense that, like, did you, I, I mean, when I watched it, like, the fear of those long yeah. takes, like, yeah. of, which yeah. I would have found I would have seized me up. up. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to be free, and yet it feels, like, across the board, all the performances feel so free. Mm. Like, how did you, did you rehearse those takes with the camera again yeah. and again and again? And then... Rehear yeah. I'm um, sorry. So, oh. And so was there, um, was there ever a point where it was like the technical was great, but you were like, no, oh, no, I wasn't. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Know. And then, you know, no one probably is ever going to get everything, I wouldn't think. But man, he came damn close because, like, I'm sure, you know, that, and by the way, you could have. Everyone in this room could have because um, you just would have. You just wanted to, you know what I mean? Mm. It seems like, oh, I could never do that. The truth is you all certainly, certainly could. Um, it, the rehearsal period was so it had to be so exact um, that well you were you, had, you were down sometimes to feet where you had to turn and deliver the line and it was uh, blocked out in a sound stage and um, because they had taken directions of the the dressing rooms and the theater itself and uh, um, and then we had to run it and your lines had to be right on where you would turn down or walk down the steps mm -hmm. and now of course you know when you got there you may go whoa this isn't we it was shocking how close everything came and then a couple times you went mm, or he had to rewrite something um, 
so everybody had to be on, not just the actors, everyone had to be spot on every time. So, you know, it's I know, Steve on Foxcatcher, the movie has such a specific atmosphere to it. Very exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of you, there's... We shot the entire film in one. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's... Continuous. There's been some talk about how, for you in particular, that you and Channing Tatum and Mark Ruffalo, the three of you kind of feel you never actually met each other until you were at the premiere of the film at the Cannes Film mm -hmm. Festival. That's true. It, explain that a little bit. How is that possible? That, w you explained it. It was exactly that. We didn't really hang out. We didn't get to know each other very well. And it wasn't anything we discussed. We just sort of naturally avoided one another. Um, and they're great guys. They're really fun. They're, I, we had a lot of... We had a lot of fun at Cannes. Um, <laughs> but that was the guiltiest little snicker I ever <laughs> <laughs> was great. How, long, how long was the shoot? About four months right. in Pittsburgh. That's a long Christ. Um, and how did you survive the unhappiness of the <laughs> shoot? Uh, I would actually, I'd go home almost every weekend. I'd fly back to Los Angeles to be with my family. Yeah. And that, being tethered to that, being able to come out of it, um, even for 24 hours, I think was really a good thing. Mm. Um, because just the, a constant, a steady diet of it, I think was a little overwhelming. But to be able to be with my kids and my wife uh, was very settling. So I think it ended up, ended up being a good thing for me. You know, Steve, one thing that people ask actresses about all the time is work-life balance, and they don't ask actors about that a lot. And mm, I wonder, true. I mean, we have new babies, engagements, lots of family things happening here. How do you, Robert, you just had a new baby, how do you balance all that stuff? Uh, well, you're assuming that, that, I mean, you can really only ever edge the control of a situation so much. You know, you want to have some boundaries. You want to have limits on stuff. You know, to me, if you can fly home for a weekend, better if and when you can to bring them. Unless, you know, unless mom says that she doesn't want to change their program. But, I mean, I don't know. I've grown up on a set. To me, what's normal mm -hmm. is a call sheet. Wow. You know, that's true. That's it's interesting. True. You're right. The p men don't get asked that, do they? No. I, I, I just turned a lot of. I used to turn movies down because I thought I'm. I actually. I it was. You're notorious I, for that. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> I know. But I mean, I, I actually. He was. I, I dig it. It was more fun to hang out with my kid than honestly. It's just fun. It's not selfish. I just loved loved it. I loved being a dad. And I thought no, I really don't want to do that. You know. So a couple good, couple of decent roles. Nothing great. Some that weren't great at all. Mm -hmm. But I just said, no, I don't want to do it. And when I was doing Batman, I would get on the, boy, the Concord was great. <laughs> and, uh, and I used to, I was so exhausted the whole time. I'd just take off and go and spend like not even 48 hours and go home and uh, fly back. And then. Uh, well, what nobody it. understands either is you were the guinea pig mm -hmm. for the mark one of all of those suits, which, yes. by the way, so 20 did. years later, I'm told, only got infinitesimally more manageable. Comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but, I mean, yeah. I've heard it's like it's banana cakes. It was different. Yeah. Different. Yeah. One of the great... It, it, was, uh, it was unbelievable because it's actually the first suit wasn't even ready till hours before we were ready to start shooting. And this was, you know, the pressure was really on everyone, especially Tim, um, who, I keep saying this, and... He, he changed everything. He just changed that in that world. He changed everything, yeah. and he, he he teed the ball up for everybody else. He so the suit was crazy. You couldn't get you couldn't get out of it. In fact, I used one of the old um, in the theater. The yeah. I can't remember what it's called. When you know, if you were playing a knight, you had to lay back on the wooden thing, <laughs> and then they'd rock you up. And I was trying yeah. to use that, and I'm very claustrophobic. <laughs> and so the first time I was locked in, I thought. This is never gonna happen. I'm never gonna do it. And what happens is it ends up. I think it's just fear. It ends up working perfectly for the character. You go, oh, man, this is like a this is like a gift because you become very interiorly isolated, you know, and mm -hmm. you kind of get locked into that thing. <laughs> so the first day, uh, we go, oh, we're shooting, you know, squeezing him in, and then Tim's looking at it, hours and hours and hours. And then we're going to shoot, and maybe the second scene. Like all this stuff, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the origin of this. All right, Michael, thing, then come down, down the steps, and the guys you come thing, and you turn, and you're going to, I don't know, shoot somebody or whatever the fuck I was going to do. <laughs> so I go like this. First day, like, so it's like, 
shoes like this, right? <laughs> and I go like this, and I turn, and it goes. It <laughs> 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 It was awesome. It was awesome, and I said, no. And then, then it was a discussion. Well, we got to do the suit. And the man doing the suit. I said, Tim, here's what he here's what we do. And I said, when he moves, he moves in power moves like that, <laughs> just to keep the fucking thing going. <laughs> <laughs> Movie making. Necessity, mother of invention. That's amazing. <laughs> Steve, we're talking to you today about this remarkable, dramatic role. Um, moviegoers may not remember your first credit on IMDb, uh, film credit, which is Curly Sue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With... Roll it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Was there ever a moment when you were starting out where you thought, I don't know if I'm going to get to play the kind of things that I want to play. It's never going to happen for me. Is that what you're saying? Or, or um, some variation. You know what? I sort of in an incremental climb up the rungs of the ladder. So, no, I just enjoyed it. I didn't really care. I wasn't, I wasn't so worried about the types of things I was going to get. I just wanted to work. I mm -hmm. just wanted to do this. And I had no aspiration to be, you know, at at this level and with you people, I mean, this is absurd. Um, I, I, to me, the I think, victory. I think, we, I think we all feel the same. I I'm not that I'm it's absurd that you're here, but that <laughs> <we> feel, <laughs> that's no, and that I, no, I do. I, 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 I think it is sort of a here, common. So. Yeah, we, we were talking yeah. to each other in the photo earlier, going, "Ah, oh, surreal, mate, isn't it?" And then we just sort of looked at each other, going, "This is also surreal." <laughs> this it's all moment, surreal. Right? Oh, it is. It is. And and to to start in on it and think if I can just. The goal, I think the victory for me was, if I can be an employed as an actor and support myself and support a family, I'm done. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I've succeeded. That's the success. Mm -hmm. And then anything on top of it um, was just uh, like fantasy. It, 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 it isn't anything that I, I aspired to or, or, or dreamt about. Mm -hmm. but, um, Both my parents are actors, and I, that's, that's the only thing I ever wanted was the same thing, was to make a living out of doing something that I loved. And I couldn't, frankly, believe it when I got paid to do it for yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. Couldn't believe it. I can't um, believe we're getting paid for this. <laughs> are, are we? Are you? I, I don't know. know. Yeah. Well, I can't believe we're getting paid as much as we're getting paid. <laughs> Robert, what about you? Did you ever have a moment where you thought, I don't know if this is going to work out? Uh, yeah, probably. But also, I, I, I'm sure that there's a quiet uh, recess in, in the psyche that we're, you're, you, you let your ambition run wild and, and you think, well, why not me? And there's this thing of, hey, you know, I came to the, you know, to the Golden Globes party, but I don't know if I can pay my rent this month. Yeah. But everyone's starting to know your name and it's that thing of you just have to just have uh, faith. But I also think if you're not on your team, why should anybody else be? Like, yeah. You know, you why have to shouldn't, you have to give it a why go, shouldn't believe I? It, yeah. In my regular life, I don't think about it too much, and I'm not competitive. I don't have any sense that we're, like, competing with each other to see who can be better or do mm -hmm. better stuff for a year. But, I mean, I, I'm sitting here just looking at you four guys, and I'm really interested in what you brought to market for this year. And I think that it just makes me feel kind of like, I just feel pride that there's this amazing sense of, 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 of reinvigorating the, the industry. It just, it just feels like a sweet, a sweet moment, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel we're well represented. If I take myself out of the equation, we're half American, half British, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. There are so that's many really talented good. people around. Yeah. It's, just, it's crazy how many how many good people there I, I actually think all actors are good. I don't really like to look at it like, oh, they're, I don't get that. You know, it's a, it's a relatively speaking, it's a courageous thing to try to do, you know. So I just admire anyone who, you know, tries. One of the kind of fun themes in Birdman is the whole idea of social media. And the yeah. Stone explains it to your, your character. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, some of you are on and some of you aren't. Robert, I think you're active on Twitter. How do you think of that in terms of your career? Is it is it useful? Uh, well, it's the information age, you know. I, I'm fairly illiterate, uh, and then I, I got into it, and then it becomes this thing that it's like anything, you know. Well, then you kind of have to feed it. I mean, I, I wish you could stop and start whenever you wanted, mm -hmm. yeah. and you can, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I don't know. It's just that thing of, like, why resist it? 
you know, if you if you're not into it, then don't bother. Mm -hmm. And if it's already started, then well, you might as well, you know, stay into it. Mm -hmm. Benedict, I've heard you say that you couldn't do Twitter. That wouldn't work for you. I think it'd be useless at it. Yeah. <laughs> Why I is think that? Be, well, I just you've heard me talk. I can't do 140. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I can write an op-ed or something, but I'd be <laughs> it'd be criminal. It'd be a waste of everyone's time and my energy. I think <laughs> would just you know end half sentence. That would be it. <laughs> you write with a quill pen. I do. I write with a quill pen. I don't yeah. even have a nib at the end of it. It's just a you know a sharpened feather at the yeah. end. That's all it is. Not even the metal bit. I don't even do the metal. Just dunk in. Huh. Exactly. I'm going to copyright. And, uh, right, an all you? perfect calligraphy and copper plate <laughs> writing that. As two <laughs> newspaper reporters, can we just say thank you for publicizing your engagement in the pages of a newspaper? That was a very <laughs> yes, wow. a quaint and unusual way to do it. Why did you do that? Well, because that's that's what I would do if I wasn't famous. It's just that's that's sort of a tradition uh, in, in our in our country. And uh, I suppose it was to slightly get a steal on the idea of a grainy long lens shot or somebody being busy with their as I like to call it, portable publishing device, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fill in the blank with your brands, but phones, and just taking a photograph of a ring on a finger going, is it, is that happening, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but, um, yeah, it wasn't consciously done with any political affiliation with the paper, anything complex, it was mm -hmm. just, that's kind of what I do to normal, again, to normalize things. That's what I would have done if I wasn't in the position I'm in as an actor. And so. Eddie, are you, are you finding it difficult to sort of maintain some distance as far as, um, you know, Paparazzi, the press, like the media, like is, is it difficult for you to hold on to your no, private life? It's not difficult for me. It doesn't. It doesn't. As in, it doesn't happen much, really. Mm. It's um, what, what I, I think what Ben was saying about the, 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 the only thing, and it's really something that you can't complain about, but is is the the, the phones, mm -hmm. and and, you know, I'm so lucky to have a lovely group of people that s support me. But it's occasionally when you're on the subway or something in London, it's the surreptitiousness <laughs> of it, of the photo being taken, and then. And then you get sort of a wee bit paranoid, um, but no, I haven't really, I haven't really got much of a, I haven't ever really had any problems with that. Michael, Robert, have you found that the 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 photo has fully replaced the autograph? Like, do people not really ask for autographs anymore? They want a photo with you? A lot. Mm. Yeah, I've heard this thing. Uh... And does that feel different to you at all? It does it does it matter one way or the other? Um... I'm not crazy about uh, having my. I don't. I'm. I'm not crazy about having my photograph taken. I, I don't know why. I do it. You know, it's how hard is it? Um, yeah, it just is what it is. I just kind of do it most of the times. It's. It's. Uh, you know, and I still sign autographs. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, just an accelerated uh, version of it. Uh, uh, I don't know. You know, there's. I. I wish there. There were more. People who are good photographers. <laughs> <that problem>. <laughs> 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 or, or quicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that's what I kind of mean. You go, I know how it works. It's like that. And you go, oh, how hard? And you're standing there going, and you roll a lot of fake smiles. A lot of it starts out okay. Kind of starts out genuine. But you look angry. Start looking angry. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you're going, dude, I know how it works. You go like that. You know? yeah. It is good to give something back in person like that. I, 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 I'm, I'm sort of more right with that than the social media thing for that for another for that reason. I suppose you can be incredibly personal with, with, with Twitter. You can bring somebody into an understanding of you. But to have someone in front of you, even if it's part of an audience, but even better if it's, it's local and immediate with a photograph or an autograph and just a conversation, really, yeah. just a brief conversation, that, 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 that means a lot. You know, and I suppose time. Twitter is a way of doing it. I take brief, a lot of pictures of, of Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm going. I don't know. I don't I know. I kind of don't. Stop. I know. <laughs> That's. I think it's getting to the point. Starting annoying. to creep me out. <laughs> what you are on Instagram? I think. I like right? Instagram, and I and I'm not connected to anything else. I don't. I, and I, I'm fascinated by it. Actually, I think it's really interesting. I just don't have the interest or time. And I'm assuming. I don't know why anyone, frankly, would care. You know where I am. Uh, or what you're it, eating. Yes, or what, you know what I'm doing. Um, or what your workout was. Fascinated by him, though. <laughs> I gotta I'm say. on teletype. <laughs> That's, that, we're just bringing it all the way back. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I am. I think, I think that's interesting to me because sometimes you'll get something from someone and it, in a weird way it tells you, not in a weird way, in a way it tells you more about them than words do. You know, you think, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. They saw that, you know, and, and had a take on, on that 
particular thing. I, I find that kind of interesting. I don't tweet, and uh, um, I guess occasionally I do, but a lot of, uh, do you tweet comedy? Oh, constantly. No, do you? <laughs> um, maybe once a month I will Yeah, me do too. I'm really lazy. But a lot of guys do a lot of really... He, he's a tremendous, extraordinarily funny dude. That's just a fact. Uh, yeah. No, and, that's... Well, you are. You are. And so, Not evidenced a, today. But, but a lot of <laughs> oh, yes. a lot of guys, right? Like, um, I'm told her... Well, really you know, Tina are. Fey is somebody who doesn't because she's, <laughs> she says... Why? Why am I going to be giving putting material out there? For I'm going to get paid for it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to be doing free comedy for people. Well, I don't think extremes. it's as crass yeah. as that, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, which I sort of get. I think it's kind of selfish, but anyway. No, no, no. I, I thought the same thing. I wondered why so many people do because the comedy folks do tweet a lot, don't they? That's a that's a yeah. big thing. I think it's an outlet for people. I don't. I generally don't. But I, I follow people, and I you know like Steve Martin. I. I read their tweets yeah. fun now michael one of the signature scenes in birdman is uh when you're running through times square in just your underwear yep and as i understand it there was a mix of actual people in times square mm -hmm. and extras with the movie did you know who was who um uh, first take pretty much because you kind of had you kind of had to you know you kind of go to negotiate physically where you want um no it got pretty <laughs> Got pretty vague <laughs> after a while, and you kind of, it's kind of a non issue, you know? You just kind of, I, I'm, it's. Can I interject? To me, uh, there's so many things about the movie that are great. <laughs> you getting your bathrobe stuck in that door yeah. and how you deal with it, to me, <laughs> is the most genuine but chaplain esque, yeah. but you. I felt like I knew something about every role you'd ever played in the Michael Keaton that I think I know and love, but then you were the guy, and then where did that, what was that, that walk, where did you, did that just happen the way you were moving? <laughs> yes. Okay, it was like a speed walk, I didn't know what the hell it was, dude. I've never seen anything like well, it. Well, trying to high, hang on to some dignity, I think, and also, there was a thing that, that, when he first leaves, like, I don't, where, you know, it's obvious this is it's it. You're in your underpants, you know. You, but I thought maybe he thinks nobody will notice. So I get this. <laughs> why would you? It's only a couple of degrees from this. I don't know why. I thought maybe I'll just kind of slide by. <laughs> so that was that made Alejandro laugh a lot, and that just kind of came to me as I was doing it. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. Um, when I read it, once again, I, it's fun to speak with these guys because I'm sure they'll go, yeah, I, I know what you. Mean. You read and you go, okay, you know, the guy who goes down the road and sees his wife and, you know, says, hi, honey, and you read a script and you hear the next page, you go, okay, and you might go, oh, yeah, I wonder, I don't know, i got to think about how that, I'll play that, but then you just got to go through and read the script, and then you come to the day and you shoot that thing. So I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm going to go, thing, and I read the scene, and I did think, oh, that, that could be funny, and I maybe took a couple of seconds and thought, yeah, you gotta really play that real, obviously. Blah, blah. Okay, whatever. And then you read it, and, you read, and it says he's running through the thing. You see it on the page. What's gonna happen? And you finish it, <clears throat> and you put it down. And you go okay. And then the day comes when you're doing it, and you think to yourself, Wait a minute. Why was there never a millisecond where <laughs> I went? Well, I'm not. I'm not running. I'm not, doing, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. You don't even think about it. None of these guys would have ever gone, hey, uh, can we, you just, and then it hits you just when you're about to do it, and you go, whoa, why didn't I, and they go, well, that's too late for that. Then when you're in it, honestly, it's this weird non, kind of non-issue. You're just kind of locked into the moment and you're doing what you're doing. But I'm telling you, actors will, <laughs> something happens where, one of you guys mentioned something, can you, you'll do anything, and if someone says to you, you know you have to literally swim the English Channel. <laughs> you'll go, can you do that? And you, if you need the job, you'll go, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I can host I've it. done yeah. it. Yeah. And somehow, that fucking guy will learn how to swim. Some actor will learn how to swim. And you'll, when that camera's rolling, you'll swim the English mm -hmm. Channel. And I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what happens. You know what I mean? Oh, I yeah. don't know what happens in a, in a human being that, that says, I, I will do that. 
you know. It's Even really hearing weird. about the prospect of that scene of you walking through his lips, you made my stomach turn <laughs> <laughs> like fear. <laughs> Actually, as we wrap up, if you could whisper in the ear of your younger self, Robert, what advice would you give to him? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I would just say, nailed it. <laughs> 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 Anyone else? I don't well, know, maybe I get Matthew cool. McConaughey to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's much better at advising himself than I would ever be. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> uh, what about you, Steve? I mean, um, seriously, if you, if you could talk to the young Steve and say, give him a word of advice, what would it be? Don't be so afraid of girls. <laughs> you know, there's, there's I've, saw, I've seen Wild. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And there's a thing that she goes through, and I'm, I'm not I'm trying not to tip, tip it here, but where she finally comes, she goes through this kind of amazing little, her little trip. I mean, literally, literally a trip and her trip trip. And she says this really great thing, which is because uh, this girl has seen and done some stuff, this woman. And she said, these things that you think you would say, I'm sorry I ever did these things. She said, no, I'd do them all over again. I'd do everything yeah. all over again because I needed to go through all that. That's what you mean by you nailed it, right? I mean, it's the this, same thing. How about thing? this just... fucking guy? How about yeah. this dude? Yeah. <laughs> shot, right. Well, it's one of those things where you get shot out of a cannon and then somehow you land and you go, stuck the landing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah.